what's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Ken. My name is Will. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in, watching, or listening, doing it however you're doing it, where you're doing it. Yeah. Guys, as always, these podcast episodes are sponsored by our good friends over at Cardsphere.com. Uh, the best place, in my opinion, genuinely to buy, sell, and trade cards. I use it very often, and genuinely, it is like the best service for getting cards at a reasonable price. Yeah. Because you can get them at like buy list pricing most of the time, yeah. which is insane. So uh, check them out. Their link is in the description below. Uh, today, though, we have a very exciting episode because it's yeah. relative to the uh, video that went up yesterday. Yeah. Because it's exciting for us. Yeah, it is exciting for us. <laughs> Uh, so if uh, if you checked out our channel yesterday, you probably saw that we did a versus video. This is our second round two. Round two. Yeah. Uh, and high. we're not going to give anything away of how things ended up, but uh, it was a lot of fun to make. Uh, yeah. We made some strides to better it, uh, and so today we are going to be talking mostly about how we made what we made, and then uh, the setup for it, and then the decks themselves. Right. What we actually ended up playing. Yeah. Uh, before that, obviously, we will have, of course, our random card of the day. As well, always. Something magic related. Something magic Don't related. Don't you worry. <laughs> and then, of course, our question of the week and then our crack of packs, of yep. course, sponsored by Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. Thank Killing you. Thank, thank you. Second tournament yeah. happened uh, this Sunday, by yeah. the way. Yeah, yeah. Tournament ever in store history. So Way to be there, guys. If you want to get in on the, on the groundbreaking events. Yeah. In Honestly, Rock Hill, South in Rock Carolina. Hill, South Carolina. If you are in the area, I would definitely check out uh, yeah. Grand Slam. They're actually making some very large strides to better up, better the store for yeah. Magic. Uh, yeah. They've got a lot of other like Pokemon and stuff already kind of established, uh, but they recently uh, were sanctioned and everything like that to actually put on tournaments, and so they're yeah. doing that now. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's dope. Uh, go check it out. But we kick off the random card of the day in three, two, one. That's the energy. I know. It's amazing. Uh, <laughs> Thought Lace. I've never seen this. It's an card. instant. I actually have. It's an instant for one blue. Target spell or permanent becomes blue. How great is this card, Will? <laughs> it's, a, it's real bad. It's a rare. I just want to point out. From Alpha and Beta. When it was printed. We can date it a little bit, right? We can date it. So when it was printed. Um. You had a lot of hate cards, right? Mana yeah. Blast, uh, Blue Elemental Blast. That's what yeah. I meant to say. I don't want to say Mana Blast. Uh, anyway, you had you had cards like that that would destroy a blue spell, yeah. permanent, something like that. So it worked with those. I think what's interesting is it says target spell or permanent becomes blue. So you can place it on the stack. Yeah, you can, yeah. You can change the color or something. And then counter target like blue spell, that kind of thing. Yeah. So this is so niche and so restricted. You'd never play yeah. it, even in Commander, really. Even no, in, honestly. Yeah. I mean, it's only legal in Legacy, Vintage, and Commander. I have never seen it played. Well, uh, no, you never for would. For no reason. I mean, there's no reason to play it. I think mm -hmm. the the issue that cards like these suffer from, and what we actually touched on a little bit last episode with Enchanted Creatures and things like that, is that you're reliant on another card to make this useful at all. Yeah, yeah and it's true. Like... I don't, especially in a limited environment, if I'm drafting, like yeah. I don't want a card that I have to have another card to make useful. Certainly. Because otherwise it's just a dead draw. Like, yeah. I don't want that. So it's just not good. I yeah, mean, I agree. Realistically. I agree. Um, th I'm sure there's some weird combo thing that you could probably pull off, but it's got to be so janky. I, uh, if there even is one is kind of my thing. I, I can't think of one. All right, you're playing. Uh, <laughs> what's the gush makes islands tap for more blue, right? No, uh, high tide. High tide. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, high tide makes islands tap for more blue. If yeah. you're playing like a storm deck, you got an extra blue mana. Why not make something else blue? <laughs> just you know for what the I mean? Just, just to that's throw an it extra in. storm count. That's an extra storm count. I don't know, guys. Yeah, it you just can't like. It doesn't seem at nah. all useful. Although it is mm -hmm. a in alpha, it's a ninety-seven dollar card. The art is really cool. The art uh, is actually cool. I wonder... Okay, so they kept the same art throughout a lot of different editions. I don't yeah. think they've ever changed it, apparently. It's sweet. Um, yeah, it's really I like sweet. the card's aesthetic, but it is... It's just weird. It's useless, really. <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, not a great card of the day. Interesting, though, right? Really, yeah, it's, it's not very good. I mean, though. the evolution of Magic's game is like... Yeah, I think that's a testament to like how things have 
have changed. I mean, we still get useless cards all the time, but I don't know about... But we really don't, because a lot of the sets are formatted... So a card is either really good in draft... Yeah. Um, or really good in constructed, and that's like talking about just a just a basic set, not sure. uh, your conspiracy, not your um, uh, unhinged or anything like that. Oh, yeah. Um, so I, I think like cards... Cards like Veraska's Contempt are good in both places, yeah. right? But outside of standard, once it rotates out, it's not really going to be really played. It's not really that relevant, right? Yeah. It's not useless. It's just it, it's t- it has an expiration date. Yeah, there are other you know? cards that do a better job of what it does, basically, is the problem. And the example of a card only being good in limited is like Torment of Venom from Mama Cat. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like expensive removal mm-hmm. isn't good in constructed because there's better options. Sure. Um, and you can just pack your deck full of them but you're not going to pull four fatal push in any draft scenario yeah, really yeah. ever uh so expensive removal like that exists now it's not a useless card it's just useful only in that one particular area right right no i think you're right i, th- um, I mean i guess if you really look at cards like there really isn't too many nowadays that are just like absolutely dead right um i still feel like if we really looked we could find some but it'd be it'd be much more hard pressed than if we were to go back to something like alpha because oh, definitely there are so many cards in alpha and just early sets in general that are mm-hmm. just not useful in any real way yep. <laughs> like i mean I, this is something that i've actually wanted to talk about on a podcast episode at one point that like a lot of magic players think of like the older sets as like the heyday of magic and how amazing it was and all this <laughs> yeah. stuff and certainly it was the inception of something fantastic and that's great but like, if you actually look at the the set alpha, it's not actually that good. Like, it's no. It's I mean, you it's know, the levels are so strange. Nothing was balanced because they no. didn't know. And you talk I mean, about stuff like data. you have uh, Black Lotus, you yeah. have the all the Moxes. Yeah. But when you think about what you're actually doing with those cards, yeah, you don't have an Emrakul to go find. No, that's you don't, the thing. You don't have a Sundering Titan to go blow up lands or do anything fun like that. Exactly. There's no Blightsteel Colossus. There's no <laughs> busted thing you can do. So it just wasn't the the climate wasn't there to really be right exceptional. It was a much different environment, yeah. and I'm sure there are people out there that played during that time that can attest to it or at least give a better understanding sure. of it because obviously we did not. But from just looking at the set list, mm-hmm. like you can you can tell it's not like it was a an amazing time, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, right. Um right. I think it is it looks like it now because people come into magic and it's like, oh, there's all these things wrong with it and stuff because that seems to get the forefront of, of the, the light these days. But like I, I it's not like it was a perfect game ever. No, and I mean I hold the opinion that there's honestly not that much wrong with magic. I don't um, think so. I mean people like to pull things out that are like hell oh, standard sucks i say that but like they're but like i don't even think standard sucks like, i don't actually think standard sucks i just don't like it as like i don't want to play it but that doesn't mean right. that it's a bad format i think it's a right. great format i'm glad we have standard but like i just don't i don't have any interest in standard yeah you fine. know what i mean yeah. but i think that's an important difference that's than fine. being like standards the worst thing in the world it should never exist like yeah, I mean, I, I probably joked about that, but I did not mean that. <laughs> I have met people who honestly dislike standard, who think it brings no value to magic. Uh, That's just factually not true, right? I think like, it's <laughs> I think it's absurd to think like that. Yeah. Um, standard, I think, is the best format. Um, it's the most like. This is derailing so quickly. Um, we're not even ten minutes. It's our, it's our show. Do what you want. It's our show. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like I mean, standard. I think is one of the best formats certainly because it's the one that not only brings new players in most right. often um but it's also ever changing which is fun right i mean that makes it interesting i get that i think there's there's some excitement to be had there whereas modern we might get a few new cards from time to time that mm-hmm. are useful and they might shake up the meta a little bit but like it's an eternal format so at its heart it's going to have roughly the same card pool no matter what right um of playable cards in modern obviously we get new cards in modern all the time when a new and set comes it's out, growing but. and i mean barring some genocidal ban like yeah there exactly. is, there, the card pool is going to stay the same yeah um or at least get incrementally bigger um, yeah. a lot of stuff that gets printed nowadays just aren't playable in modern yeah um but wizards does think about cards implications for formats they Certainly. don't they don't always know what we're going to do with them 
obviously. Uh, I would take <laughs> Monastery Mentor kind of as the example. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that they envisioned that would just decimate vintage. Um, I'm surprised they didn't see that one coming, though. I mean, that's just me. That's you know conjecture. I mean? I, yeah, I mean, when we I don't s- know that for sure, but, like, I just mean it was, it was a crazy good card. When I say decimate, <laughs> like, I mean, like, it was at one point 40%, 50% of card oh, lists yeah, were 100%. deck lists. I mean, were mentor, mentor decks. decks. So I don't, I don't think that they could have seen that coming necessarily. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't think about a card being printed in 2016 as being yeah. 15, 16? 16. I think it was 16. I could I be remember. wrong. I don't Honestly, remember when the console came out. But uh, you don't think of a card like that breaking no. uh, vintage where you get to play uh, a scary Colossus on turn one. Yeah, exactly. Or something stupid. Um, so, yeah. But, no, to, to wrap it up, really. I, yeah, this tangent. <laughs> <laughs> Magic, I think, is one of the most balanced games there is. Yeah. Um, well, it has to be. That's how it survived this long. You know what right. I mean? If it the the issue we see with other games is if they are unbalanced, people either just become uninterested or they get so interested so quickly and then lose it all immediately. And it's yeah. like it's just not not that yeah. exciting. I mean, the biggest two things that will will hurt Magic are uh, what's the word? An elite player base. Yeah, you can take that to mean however you really want. I don't mean the pro players. I mean players being elitist. Yeah. Uh, so I guess you can't take it anyway. Well, that's what I mean. Uh, the, the second thing um, <laughs> is a paywall, which they're kind of, yeah. kind of has always been. Yeah. Um, but again, the great thing about Magic is that there's a format out there that kind of circumvents that. If you want to play Popper, cool. Yep. You want to play Commander, cool. Um, Standard is relatively cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you are intelligent with when you sell and buy cards, you can... Uh, you can make you, you can, can minimize the amount of money that you have right, to you put stand in. to you yeah. know you stand to gain back some that you lose absolutely um and i mean if you're winning all the time you can sell all your rares and stuff there you, go. you pull sell it all off not that i've ever done that but <laughs> i'm i'm on the bad end of the spectrum where i uh hoard everything that i ever get yeah yeah but like I mean, I mean to the point where i just have like boxes and boxes of stuff that i really don't need and i haven't gone through and a long time but i mean if you want to collect something collecting yeah, is like yeah. a sure it's still one of those hobbies that people are like you you collect stamps or whatever yeah, it is yeah. like collecting is still a valid hobby I don't, yeah not that it's you just, need validation to no collect i mean stuff, but, whatever you know. but like i just i've been thinking very seriously about going through all the bulk stuff and like yeah. trying to pull stuff out and it's just like it's so daunting at this point i'd rather just throw it in a box and keep it <laughs> Like, all right do that so, <laughs> nothing wrong with that it's kind of sad i'm a little lazy um anyway all right so yeah magic's a great game yeah done been done all right cool <laughs> god that was a tangent um yeah the versus video so all right. uh yeah so the way we set this one up uh the last one we picked a format in that case it was modern mm-hmm. uh we each decided on decks that we thought would have an interesting matchup mm-hmm. And then just played it out. So we knew the information ahead of time, what we were going to be playing, all that. <clears throat> yeah. uh, and they were pretty standard lists. Right? Yeah, they were. They were Nothing very funky. standard. They were tailored just a bit more to each other. That way there weren't too many like just straight up dead cards. Uh, because occasionally that can be a thing. But mm-hmm. uh, in this case, we kind of tailored things a little bit. But yeah. with this one, we thought it would be fun. And we kind of want to try something new, I think, for the next couple. We've got some ideas for this. But... Mm-hmm. Um, we decided we would pick a random number one through five, which would be the number of colors uh, yeah. that each of us would play. So, so right. I uh, got three, you got two. Yeah. Uh, and then you would do, we picked random colors as well. I ended up in Naya, mm-hmm. uh, for anybody that doesn't know, red, white, green. Uh, you ended up in Is It, yeah. blue, red. Uh, and so the only restriction we had was we had to stick to those colors. Yeah. And we could build any deck we wanted. Uh, we did not tell each other what the deck lists were before we played. Right. And so it forced, in my instance, because Naya is like notoriously the aggro, like zoo Pretty deck much. kind yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah. And so my immediate thought was, well, I can just build like a modern Naya aggro deck and it would be fine, but it wouldn't be very interesting because it's just going to s- attack and swing it. You know, like it's not very yeah. fun to watch, I feel like. Maybe, but it would be like it either loses really quick or wins really quick, and that's kind of it. Like, there's yeah, not yeah, much. I mean, it, it would always depend on what it's playing, but you're yeah, right. but like, so what I thought to do was uh, 
kind of switch things up a bit and try and build a Naya toolbox creature deck uh, mm -hmm. with Recruiter of the Guard and stuff like that. And so the mindset being that like I wanted to be able to always have an answer to whatever he decides to play, uh, which turns out is a lot harder than I thought because of the deck that you decided to build there, buddy. <laughs> my pleasure. Uh, oh, is it my turn? <laughs> yeah, go for okay. it. Uh, so being in blue red, the choices laid before me uh, were swirling, just like a maelstrom. Uh, there was possibility storm for one that I thought about. That would have been a sweet deck. That yeah, that would have been cool. That would have been a sweet deck. Um, and I, I I was pulling out pieces for it. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna get every cool. No no, can't do that. Um, and it, it really came down to something I'm comfortable with pretty much always uh, as a Delver deck. It's blue-red Delver. Yeah. Um, but it not being in modern this time mm -hmm. opened up a few more doors for me. Mm -hmm. um, so my idea was to really play a strict creature base of only having uh, about eight creatures. I wanted to, like eight to ten was kind of my, yeah. my thought process. Um, but then mostly a bunch of spells and stuff. A lot of the decks that I like to run have very efficient creatures um, that are usually two for ones uh, or represent like a must answer card. We talked yeah. about that, I think, the last episode. Um, so I wanted to think about cards that would do that, but also keep Delver as a main theme just because it adds a ton of value turn two. Um, oh, yeah. And it's not always easy to answer Delver unless you just have spot removal. Um, and you have invested so little in it that, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, Ended up going blue red Delver, uh, but the cards that I added that are a little bit different you don't always see are uh, um, Blood Moon. I just I spaced out. I remember the other card I put in it. Uh, Blood Moon <laughs> um, and True Name Nemesis. So Blood Moon. I hate you for that. <laughs> Blood Moon in my mind worked as um, to make it much more controlling uh, because I knew he's Naya. That's it. I knew that I could shut off most of his decks or most of his deck really yeah with blood moon um, yeah, yeah. two-thirds of his colors it's kind of hefty mm -hmm. uh, i know kev doesn't love playing in red so i figured that you know he wouldn't have a lot of scary red stuff uh and you were right <laughs> yeah i wasn't super worried about that um so i thought like, yeah blood two seems relevant good. red cards maybe I had like Grim Lava Mancer yeah. as a like way to deal damage without having to attack. I mean, yeah, uh, it's to kind of get around board stalls. Yeah, and then I had uh, Huntmaster of the Fells mm -hmm. uh, as a finisher because obviously right. it's guaranteed two for one basically unless you yeah, counter. Huntmaster's nuts. So good. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I thought Blood Moon would kind of be. It was a little bit nasty. It was pretty backbreaking. Every once in a while, it, it yeah. became pretty backbreaking. We yeah, uh, we found that it was yeah definitely. i mean i so in my deck building i because i knew he was in red i was actually worried about blood moon from the start because i know will and i i just feel like that's a possibility and so naturally even in normal deck building though i would have put some number of basic lands in mm -hmm. uh i ended up upping the count just before we actually sat down to play just to be safe because again i didn't know so i just wanted to make sure um and i had some double white some double green yeah um, I was be twirling my mustache. Oh, is that what that. it was? Yeah. I was wondering. I was like, are you just itchy or are yeah. you? <laughs> um, and so yeah. I upped my basic land count just a bit by like a forest and a plains, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'll say it came in handy. <laughs> For um, sure. Definitely. But like, yeah. uh, that was that was definitely a tough spot. There were some some occasions where that became difficult. That's Blood Moon, man. We'll say. Um, yeah, and True Name is... I think I say it in the video. True name is just a busted card. Yeah. Like protection from anything except for a sweeper. But anything. I'm a Naya toolbox creature deck. Like yeah. I don't run sweepers. <laughs> there's no there's no edict effect that I had no. to worry about. Um, so I, I was like, I, there's really no way he can target this. Yeah. I mean, he could, I guess, have some white sweepers. Maybe that's kind of my thought, but. True the, name is such a potent threat already. Yeah, and fine. like I kind of went deep with the like a toolbox creature, almost only creature deck. I did yeah. have a few like path to exiles and very small stuff, but sure. like um, that was really to only deal with one off creatures, which I didn't think you'd have many of just because it's a blue red deck anyway. Right. Um, I will say I didn't expect true name nemesis. I should have. That was just an oversight on my end, but um, I. 
I went really deep with the creature themes, so I had like one of of just so many different things for so many different situations. Sure. Um, like Huntmaster the Fells being a very good finisher that I can pull out with Recruiter. Thalia's I had a like three or four Thalia's I believe uh, yeah. because obviously that's just a good card against blue red like nine times out oh, of yeah. ten that's just going to be amazing Thalia you invest so little like yeah you, you can, it's fantastic yeah. and a lot of times because it's a turn two spell uh, you can kind of get it out from under some number of counters uh, usually yeah I'd say usually so. yeah especially if you're on the play um, it it just does so much work against those decks mm-hmm. and so. But I also had cards like Spirit of the Labyrinth, which I don't actually believe ever came out, but uh, basically made it so you can only draw one card per turn. And so yeah. the idea being you're in blue, my guess is you're probably going to have some number of cantrips and draw spells. Like, it'd be really just useful to have this card available to me. Yeah. Um, and so I had stuff like that. I had uh, uh, my one of my favorite cards, Deranged Hermit, which I didn't, like... My mindset uh, was not in any right place when I put that card in the deck. I was just like, this card's amazing. I'm, I'm just going to throw it in here. I can fetch it. Like, why it's not? It's awesome. It's really good. Don't get Drain me wrong. But great. Like, like, I could have just... Pl- like, Huntmaster would have been an easier card to play. And it sort of plays some of the same roles where it's like a guaranteed kind of... You get a token. You get some extra stuff. Yeah. So it's just like a solid value creature. It costs one less. It's a little bit stronger. Like, there's some... I don't see. I don't know that it is. Well, you get a ton of squirrels with the range tournament, obviously. And I oh, did yeah. play uh, two Flicker Wisp, yep. which the thought being, if it ever came up, that I could flicker either Huntmaster or Derange tournament mm-hmm. uh, to to just go nuts with tokens. You know what I mean? Yeah, but like, you definitely could have. Uh, the potential was there for a really high ceiling with this deck. I will say. Yeah, I think uh, that's very true. It would have been very very sweet. I think. Yeah. I had a much more focused plan, I yeah. think. Um, with it being a Delver deck, you really are just an aggro deck. But I wanted to make my turn three the turn that I am putting my foot on the game. Yeah. Um, so when thinking about cards, I didn't. I thought about Bedlam Rever- <laughs> Bedlam Reveler as my uh, other creatures. Um, but there was a possibility that those don't come in turn three. Mm. Um, so my that's kind of how i decided on the two uh yeah, yeah and that was the top of my curve those were the the most expensive cards in there was i guess you count for a little but you really don't no uh, you don't <laughs> um so yeah that's why i focused blood moon and uh true name nemesis yeah was it turn three i'm doing one of the two and it's kind of up to kevin to answer and then every turn after that i'm either just adding to the board state or mm. i'm answering things that he's got uh so blood moon really keep him off stuff until i got to where I wanted to be with True Name or with Delver. Uh, and Delver, obviously, is just a threat, so protect it. Yeah. Um, which is nice because Delver doesn't need a lot of protection because I already got it. Yeah. Um, the other creature that isn't always in Delver, but I think more often than either of the other two, was a Young Pyromancer. You didn't never see mm-hmm. it, and I never played it. Um, yeah. It was just in there as a two-of to kind of rent out threats. Well, it's just so much value out yeah, of the two drops. Yeah, it's nice. Um, when you run so many cantrips, draws, burn spells, one yeah. mana things that I had, uh, it just seemed like a no-brainer. Um, I really felt like 10 permanents was better than mm. 8. Just because I was what I was taking. I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't sure if it would be Pyromancer or Bedlam Reveler, um, but Pyromancer was cheaper, Yeah, um, which I had the mindset initially and throughout the deck building process that Mm. cheaper was the better route to go here Um, which isn't always true I mean blue red gets a lot of fun stuff that's a bunch of mana Uh, and if the game ever goes long no matter what you build you kind of want something to invest your mana in late game Mm -hmm. Um, but blue red is nice in that its investment is just digging for things that will answer the board state uh, or protect the board state so um yeah, I felt like cards that capitalize on that would yeah. would do me good. So um, that's how I got it. Yeah, I did want to point out, too, you mentioned like turn three was kind of your optimal turn. Mm-hmm. And this is something that we didn't actually talk about beforehand. Uh, and in retrospect, it would have been good to have talked about, I guess. But mm-hmm. like the plan was because we could build anything we wanted, we didn't give mm-hmm. each other any information. You opted for turn three as kind of your optimal turn. And right. weirdly, we both ended up on turn three because my goal, my optimal play would have been something in like turn one, fetch land into uh, Deathrite Shaman, and then turn two into Recruiter. 
and then on turn three be able to play some big threat sure. you know, or some back-breaking card for you. And so yeah. it ended up being that it just so happened that we ended up both kind of on turn three as the optimal turn. I mean, it's kind of good. If you're not going a purely legacy list, yeah. you know, yeah, I think yeah. that's, that's kind of a good I think it turn makes to aim for, you know. Um, I will say I think my deck suffered from lack of consistency, but I think that's kind of the nature of a toolbox deck anyway. Definitely. I um, mean, Because you don't know. I mean, you got tons of one-ofs. <laughs> like, yeah. You're, you're going to end up drawing random stuff that either doesn't really help you or, you know, whatever. But yeah. Um, it was still a really fun deck to play. I really like the Naya Toolbox deck. Yeah. Recruiter is amazing. I think it's great. I think you could have... I'm not going to try to give you advice, Kevin. No, give me advice, but, please. Um, you could have kept the Toolbox theme, mm -hmm. left Recruiter in. Yeah. Added a little bit more like longevity, maybe scavenging ooze. I did have scavenging ooze. But like more. Oh, oh, you I see what I mean? mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I did go pretty heavy on one ofs. Right. So a little a little less one ofs, yeah. maybe some um, Coco. Maybe you know, I little... thought about Coco, but because turn three was kind of where I was thinking, I just felt like it might be a bit too slow. Well, that's why you add stuff that I mean, you, you add slows the board. Or you right. slow the board. I get that. But my initial thought was to go kind of purely hate bears and splash like green and red for just like bolts and some yeah. other green card. Like maybe even Coco just as like a top end kind of thing. But yeah. I just feel like that would have been bad. Um, I just mean more, more uh, like ways to fetch things. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it would have been nice. I did have, uh, which unfortunately Blood Moon shuts down a lot of the draw from that deck because a lot of the draw comes from uh, Horizon Canopies and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, um, that's true. And so. And Grove, probably? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like it. It just did not have the consistency that I think I would have wanted. Sure. Um, it was still really good. It still did its job pretty well, but, like, it could have been better, obviously. Yeah. Um, but that being said, I mean, that's kind of the fun of doing stuff like this where we just kind of build whatever we want. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, um, my deck, again, if the weakness was this top end. Yeah. Like, it just it didn't have a top end. Yeah. Being turn three, nothing super exciting comes out on turn three. I mean, it's great for the the state as it's in, but yeah, yeah. you're not gonna drop some. You're not gonna drop Karn or anything, no, no, right? No, no. Yeah. So, um, yeah, still very strong. So, I would have honestly much preferred to have your color combination. Well, yeah, you would have the Storm. Naya. No, I I thought about Storm actually for you, but I didn't. Did you? That was another I, thought I had. So Storm. here's the thing. Yeah. This is just something that has started because we've done this YouTube channel now. Mm. I love Storm. It's one of my favorite decks. I try right. not to play it intentionally now <laughs> because, like, because, I mean, if you guys have watched any of the streams, everybody's like, oh, Kevin's drafting Storm. I almost never draft Storm. I only did once. So Kevin makes a cube like, <laughs> now and then, and it's super fun to come over and play on cube nights. But <laughs> whenever you play cube, you almost always have to draft the Storm cards before Kevin does. I don't just always draft Storm. Because if you let Kevin draft Storm, he will just draft Storm and win. That's it. Storm is that uh, yeah. All I'm saying is I've only drafted Storm one time on stream. On stream, yeah. There's a sorted history <laughs> of you and Storm. I mean, Storm's a fun deck, but You're like now I genuinely Paris and Helen of Troy, dude. All I'm saying is I intentionally don't go for Storm nowadays. That's the that's your deck archetype that would have launched a thousand ships. Yeah. Started a war. Well, destroy Troy. It's not even on a map, Kevin. Can you find Troy on a map? No, because the Grecians were like, play something fair. And then I played Doomsday. <laughs> <laughs> Doomsday has become kind of a pet deck for me. Yeah, that deck is hilarious. <laughs> Nobody else thinks so. No, I hate Doomsday. Um, that was also on stream. The Kess deck, was that that one? Uh, the commander with uh, Andrew. Yeah, you didn't play Doomsday with it, though. That was the combo in there. Right? That was the combo, but yeah. I don't think I... I think I might have played it at one point, but like yeah. it didn't matter at that point. You didn't play Doomsday. Yeah, it was in the deck. I mean, well, right, sure. but you didn't I think cast there, Doomsday. No, I think the there was one time where I did because I had it in my hand for like an extra, a, extraordinary number of turns. You didn't cast Doomsday. Did I not? I what did I cast? You casting Doomsday. Well, all I'm saying is I comboed out to win, and I didn't have Storm in the deck. No, I think you just killed us. Really? Yeah. So I'll have go to, back and watch. I'll this have to ask Andrew, know. but yeah, yeah, I don't think you won with Doomsday. I thought I won with maybe not. Uh, if I didn't, I didn't. 
Um, but I do love Doomsday. That's kind of a pet deck for me yeah. lately. That's, um, that's fine. Combo decks, man, they're the best. <laughs> no, they're not. Says nobody ever. <laughs> yeah, no, they're not. Um, Except the worst people in the world. That's a um, fact. Looking at you, LSP. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's the one that introduced that deck to me uh, through the power of the internet, not like a, hey, Will, check this out. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he's the one that made that deck, that brought that deck to my, li- to yeah. my life. Yeah, yeah. I'll I say. think I saw LSV play it one time, and I was like, this is amazing. Yeah, that's what, that's what I said. No, no, I know. I'm just saying. You nerd. Whatever. And it was um, really good. I just hated it. It's like, oh, that's real dumb. It's really good. Boo. It's kind of a jank deck, though, really. Like, in Vintage, where it's played, is kind of a jank deck. Only, well, I mean, in Vintage, I guess, but, like... I mean, you turn one Doomsday, you can yeah. easily do that. But, like, I still... Like, its percentage is very low in the metagame. Well, yeah, because you're relying... I mean, you've got to bank on them yeah. not having... So, if you turn one of Doomsday and you're on the play and they've got Force, they just let it resolve, right? Oh, yeah. And then whenever you try to cast your well, actually, little dude. It depends how you played it, I would say. Because if you, like... Well, there's one win with Doomsdays. With, no, with, no. Uh, what I mean, yet, though, right? is, like, if you... To play the Doomsday, if you Dark Ritualed into Doomsday... Yeah. And then, like, have very few cards in your hand after playing it, my mm. instinct would be to force the Doomsday. If you played it off of, like, a Black Lotus or something like that, you're more likely to be able to play a second one. And so you don't force it in that instance. But I don't know. I mean, you just force the Lab Maniac, I guess. But, like, yeah, I don't that, know. I'm, I wait for the Lab Maniac. Because Doomsday is not how sense. you win. Yeah, that's true. It's just how you facilitate it. And I've never played against Doomsday. so It's not fun. <laughs> it is not fun. I have it built right over there. I know. You can go get it. <laughs> it is not fun. <laughs> it is. It's not eggs bad, but it is not fun. Eggs is really bad. Most like Doomsday, you win pretty much immediately. But that's like, the thing. It takes. It's like eggs. You have to just sit there, and it's very easy to mess up eggs. So like, you literally have to sit through the whole thing. Because <laughs> yeah. if they do mess up, then they just lose. Like eventually, a lot of the time. Yeah. Um. But that's a topic for another day. Yeah. 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 Um. Anyway, first is video. You guys should go watch it. It was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh. The decks were really, really sweet. Again, we're not going to spoil anything, but go. Enjoy it. It was it was a lot of fun. That is oh yeah, by far the most produced video we have ever attempted. Um, I think the yeah. previous one was fine, and at the time it was obviously better than anything we had done. Mm. Uh, I think in this instance we stepped it up a notch. I sure. would agree. I would um, agree. Huge thanks to uh, Julius for helping us. With yes, that. thank you to Julius. Um, I should have said it at the top. Yeah, I we should have, it, and I didn't. Um, oh, he is not a magic player, but he is a very dear friend. And yeah. He's awesome. You know who you uh, are. If you're way to be there, Julius. I listening. doubt he's watching. 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 That's what I said. That's Magic exactly. the watching. <laughs> Magic the watching. Um. So should we say very mm. quickly what our thoughts are for the next versus video? No. Keep you don't want to keep are them you in the dark. Are you kidding me? Okay. Stay fine. tuned for the next one. It's exciting. Should, are we trying to do this once a month? I don't know. Are we? We've talked about it, and we're trying to, but I feel like that's very ambitious. Dude, I don't know. We'll see what we could do. Um, if you want to see more, let us know. There you go. Hit us up. Comment on the video and like, be like, yo, let yeah. me get some more. We're not going to be like those YouTubers that are like, if this gets 100 likes in the no, first two days. That. That's stupid. Yeah. Sorry, Sorry we're not doing that. who does that. Yeah. I don't, I don't like that. But just tell us if you like it. I take your uh, opinions do, 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 do. into account. Uh, are you ready to move on to the next segment? Yes. Sorry, I was actually reading for the next segment. Are oh, you fine? It's uh, question of the week, right? Question of the week, guys. Uh, what was the best uh, card for Commander in Core 2019? Oh, I, have, I have to get my answer. Um, I forgot. Actually, there was some big Commander news recently that we need to talk about at some point. Um, I don't know what it is. It was interesting. So we'll probably we'll talk about it. We might talk about it with Andrew on the next episode. We probably will. Because um, uh, he's a Commander dude. Uh but yeah, uh, do do do. Let me see. I have an answer for what my is, but I am forgetting do her you? name. Oh, she's one of the other dragons. Uh, obviously. Okay, so a lot of people, yeah, Arcadus is like 100 percent the one that people are all stoked about. The defender. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah. That's the one that got okay. by far the most votes. Uh, Nicol <laughs> Bolas is there too, though. Uh, really, uh, it's just all the Elder Dragons. Though, unfortunately, like there's not much to say. Other yeah, than that. I think so. I don't know what to do with Chromium. I don't either. A little vague, right? Yeah, I kind of have no answers. Yeah. Um. I mean, it protects itself. Yeah, I think it's that's good what card. It's, I think that's why its ability is what it is. What you Voltron it? Yeah, that's my thought. Except, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean that's my thought. I mean it would work. Chromium Voltron. It it's protects. a late game Voltron though. Well, it you know what I mean. I mean you just ramp into it, obviously. Yeah, you have to, but it just protects it's just itself with your discardy thingy. You um, get all the great tutors also. Yeah. In that color combo. Mm-hmm. Uh, Palladium Wars is kind of the worst, but he's just a monstrous card though. She. She. Excuse me. Um, just really, really strong. Yeah. But I guess no, you could Voltron her too. You could, but again, it's. Eh. Yeah. yeah. You could ramp easier. I mean, in green. I suppose. Well, but I mean, you get all your artifact ramp, so. Oh, that's true. That's easier true. Easier is kind of. Relative. Indeed. Um, yeah, the Elder Dragons, uh, this cycle is really cool. And this is what really made M19 exciting for me. Um, yeah, honestly. Because on its own, it's not an awesome set. No. The draft meta is funky. It's a lot slower than I'm used to. It's way slower, actually, yeah. I mean, I've been watching a lot of drafts, and I've practiced drafted a number of times, actually, mm-hmm. with it. Um, and, like, the deck archetypes are well-established. Sure. So, like, I dig that, because obviously it's a core set. We kind of need that. Definitely. Um, definitely. But, like, it's so slow. I, I mean, it's just mm-hmm. way slower than I expected. Yeah. And there's no real way to kind of go over the top with stuff like that. And, I mean, it's a core set. I right. get it. I'm not expecting it. But I'm just saying, like... Occasionally, you want to do the thing where you feel kind of cool for pulling off some play, whether it wins you the game or not. And, like, yeah, I just feel like there isn't much. I feel like it'd be Sarkon Ball into something, but, like, I if mean, you get Sarkon, you don't get a dragon usually. No, honestly. So that's kind of a bummer. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, I just don't think that really works. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's a cool set, but, like, it's not the best to draft, I would yeah. say. Um, Real quick, the next question. Of oh, yes. the week. Go for it. What is the most pushed card in Magic's history? Um, there have been a lot. If you don't know what pushed means, <laughs> uh, just go read Hunt, Hunt Master. That's always been my answer. Hunt Master of the Fells is the most pushed card in Magic's history. But Do you want to? Sure. So pushed is like, <laughs> pushed is broken um, or unfair or essentially... They tried to make a card as good as they possibly could without breaking the format entirely. Yeah. So, like, flirting with that edge. There you go. That's a good way to put it. Uh, yeah. So, pushed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All Leave right. your, your answers in the comment section or comment on any of our social media stuff. But we come to our crack packs. Uh, we, of course, have our goal cards. Mine is Supreme Phantom. Because I want it. Sponsored by Grand Slam Cards and Glass. Yeah. What? <laughs> Our Crocker Packs are sponsored by Grand Slam. I forgot to say that first. Yeah, they are. Sponsored by Grand Slam! Yeah. Comics and Collectibles. They yeah. recovered it. We covered it. Said it. Uh, but yeah, my goal card, Supreme Phantom. My goal card is this. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> that would have been so cool. Hey, I got a scape shift. Uh, oh, wow! Hey, awesome! <laughs> my goal card's Leonin Warleader, not Death Baron. Um, <laughs> not Death Baron. Yeah, Leonin Warleader's my goal card. It's, yeah. it's busted. Um, yeah, that's a great card. Yeah. I'm going to try... I Ooh. thought I was making mono green for standard this season, but I might be making green white. So, so I might be making mono white. Mono white? Life gain. For standard, Kevin? No, I'm dead serious. There's a deck there. I promise. I will show... I'll show... You guys don't get to see it yet. We might talk about it at some point. I'll show you, you later. You, it'd be, have to be a big sell. It's, it's pretty sweet. I'll just say. I mean, you get a Johnny's Pride Mate. You get, like... What else comes Screw in? Screw it. We're talking about it. Here's the thing. All okay. Right. <laughs> there is, and I don't remember the names of the cards. Actually, hold up. Hold up. I'm just going to flick through Guys, look through, through, yeah, look through your pack really um, quick because I definitely have started the I mean, the probably deck Death list. Baron's the pig, by the way. It's a, it's two, two, three skeletons you control and other zombies you control get plus one, plus one and have death touch. Yeah. Um, that's nice. Yeah, that's super good. It doesn't, Mine doesn't have as much support, but that's fine. I kind of am going between two cards. Uh, Lich's Caress, which is just a decent removal spell, but Skyrider Patrol seems real sweet, so I'd probably go with that. Um, I would definitely not pick Ooh. Scape Shift, by the way. There's also Vampire Sovereign and Colossal Majesty. Colossal Majesty yeah. is a sweet engine. It is. That's my thought. I've I don't been like, impressed with that. I don't like picking engines first, necessarily. No, 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 no. I like 
Because they don't, it doesn't affect the board. Right. Vampire Sovereign is nice. It's a 3 4 flyer for uh, five. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you're like building this deck. Oh, I've already started. Yeah, yeah. So here's the thing. Okay. okay. Uh, for turn one, you get a Johnny's Welcome. Okay. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. Okay. Or you get Fountain of Renewal. At the beginning of your upkeep, you gain one life, and then you can pay three, sack it, and draw a card. Okay. So a little bit of extra card draw. Obviously, you don't bank on it, but it's two solid one drops for uh, a life, for a life gain sure, strategy. Sure. Okay. Uh, turn two, a Johnny Primate, obviously. Yep. Uh, if it sticks around, it will trigger most likely every turn. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of actual good life gain. There's also Diamond Mare. So when it enters the battlefield, you choose a color. Whenever a spell of the chosen color is cast, you gain one life. So white. Okay. Uh, so you choose white. It's a mono white deck, obviously. Turn three, Mentor of the Meek for card draw. I do love Mentor. Uh, absolutely fantastic. A really, really good card. Oh, uh, I did forget. Um, what was the other card? Famished Paladin will trigger every turn. So it's just a solid two drop. I don't ah. know if I'm going to leave it in the deck yet or not. Again, this is preliminary stages, but it will trigger every turn, so it's a 3-3 three, three for two. Uh, Resplendent Angel bad. is the other three th uh, drop. 3-3 three, three flying for three. At the beginning of the end step, if you gained five or more life, create a 4-4 four, four white angel. Uh, and then until the end of the turn, Resplendent Angel gets plus two, plus two in lifelink if you pay some life. Uh, turn four, I right now kind of have cast out, uh, only because... You don't have much removal. You need removal. Uh, I agree. And this seems to be the best way to do it. You can also cycle it in a pinch, and that's why I kind of like it. Uh, turn five, we have Lyra Dawnbringer. Uh, other angels you get, you control, get plus one, plus one, and have lifelink. With the Resplendent Angel, you get plenty of tokens. <laughs> Crested Sun Mare is the other turn five play. Anytime you gain life, you get a 5-5 five, five indestructible horse. <laughs> Sorry, any, the, anytime you gain life? Uh, at the beginning of the end step, if you've gained life this turn, you get a 5-5 five, five, uh, horse, and horses are indestructible. Tell me this doesn't seem kind of fun. Oh, that seems awesome. I'm telling you, it might actually be a thing. Um, How much does this cost, Kevin? Uh, the thing that I have here, which is not a full list, is $91. This is budget right now, dude. Yeah, it's budget. How many cards is in this right now? <laughs> <laughs> it's a 60 card deck, 15, but it's 60. like I need to flesh out some of the slots a little bit more. But yeah, it's it's a solid deck. That's all I'm saying. I have 20 planes. Uh, obviously, there's some other lands you can throw in there, like the Scry Land uh, yeah. that's generic because you're mono. Uh, the so you can do it. The Cycling Land? No, no, no. The, the there's a generic. It taps for generic, but when it enters the battlefield, you scry one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just smooths out your draw a little bit. Right. Um, but the Mentor of the Meek really smooths out your draw as well as the Fountain. Everything's so cheap. It's very cheap. I mean, you curve out at five, uh, but you've only got like six slots for five. Uh, Oketra's Monument is in there as filler right now, by the way. I just, it's like fine. I don't really like it. Uh, it's a little too slow. You're thinking about it now, aren't you? Yeah, you could do something else for... Oh, Catcher's Mon is two? Is it two? Uh, yes, I believe so. There are actually a lot of cards. This is just a first round list. So that's a cyborg card. The Shield Mare. Yeah. Dude. I'm telling you, this deck is a thing. <laughs> no, you run Shield Mare main board. You think so? The meta right now? Well, that's true. With the meta being Red, black, red. mono yeah. red. Can't be blocked by red creatures? Yeah. Bro. There's a reason Vine Mare's busted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Did I convince you? Uh, and you thought I didn't care about standard. Yeah, you kind of convinced me. Yeah. It's not bad, right? All right. <laughs> so you'll see me next Friday <laughs> playing um, Mono White Life Game. I do want to pick up some of these cards. I may, uh, excuse me, order them or go to Grand Slam if they've got them. Uh, Let's go ahead and get like, eight of all of them, Kev. You want this deck? <laughs> Definitely. It looks sweet, dude. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Are we yeah. still recording? Yeah, we totally are. Hey, guys. <laughs> we forgot. This happens all the time. Oh. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, is that it? Anything else we need to talk about? This has been a rambly episode, dude. Uh, th I think that's it. Cool. Um, Please check yep. out that Versus video if you have not already. Um, we're really proud of that one. I think it's really sweet. Um, so it would it would mean a lot to us, obviously. And if you enjoy it, please make sure to like it. Give it a thumbs up. If you hate it, do the other thing. It's a thumbs down. It's a thumbs down. It's sad. But we'd appreciate it if you would like it. Um, 
anyway, yeah. I think that's it, though. Yeah, it's all I'm, for me. We are going to get out of here. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. And this has been It Resolves. Go get a life or like a million. <laughs>